Inhale, air up, air up, air up. Okay? I'm gonna get you to know how to graph your cotangent. So we're graphing the cotangent. There's a couple things we need to remember about the cotangent. First of all, we do not have an amplitude anymore, right? All our amplitude is that number in front A, all it's gonna do is you know, it's gonna tell us our stretch and compression. But we need to remember by looking at the um, parent graph of a cotangent function, we don't have restriction on our amplitude. So we're not gonna be interested really with finding the amplitude. The amplitude will help us determine the shape of the graph, but that's really about it. But we do need to figure out what the period is. So please remember that the period for a cotangent and tangent function is pi over b. All right, for sine and cosine, it was two pi over b. Now it's gonna be pi over b. Um, in this problem, we need to determine, well, what is our b? Remember, our b is our number in front of the x. Well, the number in front of this x is a one, but that one is being divided by two. So therefore, our b is going to be one half. All right, then I just go and get this off the bottom. I multiply by my reciprocal. And therefore, I get two pi, okay? So what that means is that now it's gonna take um, you know, two pi for my graph to complete one cycle. Um, all right, now the next thing what we need to do is we need to determine our cotangent and our tangent are both gonna have our asymptotes, all right? Our graph is going to approach our two lines. Now, in our parent graph, I'll graph the parent graph here real quick. Our parent graph, Um, what is that? Here's that pi. Okay, so there's our there's our cotangent graph between our two pi and across that pi over two. Okay, with the period of pi. Well, now what happens is that our period is now just changed to two pi. Now there's one thing that's really helpful for you guys to do. What we want to do is if our original asymptotes were at sorry zero and pi. Whatever happens inside our function has now altered our, our altered our asymptotes. So what I'm going to do is you could say, right, I said like, I can say x equals zero and x equals pi, right? Those are my x values, and that is for cotangent of x. Okay, does everybody understand? For cotangent of x, your x values are equal to zero and pi. That's just for one period, right? Does everybody say that? So if there's any alterations that I take inside my function, this works for sine, cotan or sine, cosine, um, tangent, cotangent. It works for all of them. What you do is you just take whatever's inside your function and set it equal to your two endpoints of one period, or your two asymptotes in this case. So since one period is, is zero and pi, I'm gonna say x over two equals zero, and x over two equals pi. All right, now this one's pretty simple because all we're doing is ex expanding our period from pi to two pi. But what you guys can see is my endpoint on the left is not gonna change when I multiply by two on both sides. And here, when I multiply by two, I get x equals two pi, which we already knew if you knew that the period is just gonna be expanded to two pi. So it wasn't any kind of rocket science, but when you have something, when you get more complicated problems, using this procedure is really gonna help you. So just make sure that you take your two asymptotes and then set whatever is inside your function equal to them and then solve for x. So my graph, so I said my graph now goes between, instead of having an asymptote at pi, it now has an asymptote at two pi. And so if I was going to graph two periods, this would be at 4 pi. Well, why do I know the next one's at 4 pi? Because the period, right, is 2 pi. So the distance from here to here should be 2 pi. The distance from here to here should be 2 pi. Um, one thing we notice is that the intercept, uh, if you guys remember, when we were talking about, um, when we were talking about sine and cosine, remember I said there's four important points, right? So you had to take whatever your period was and divide it by four. You guys remember that? Right? Well, a tangent and cotangent, they don't have four important points. They don't, it's not cyclical like that where it has a max and a min. However, there is kind of, um, there is one important point, which is the intercept. So what you can do to find your intercept is just take whatever your original period is and divide it by two. So in this case, I have two pi 
divided by two, which is pi. Now, obviously, the math in this one's fairly simple for you to use, but if you have something more difficult, it's helpful for you guys to understand how to find your intercept. So you just take your period, in this case, which is two pi, I divide it by two, and I get pi. So that's just gonna reassure me that it's gonna cross that pi. And then if I add another two pi to that, right? And why am I adding two pi? Because that's my period, right? The distance is gonna be two pi. Therefore, that's gonna be at three pi. And that doesn't look really pretty, but you guys get the idea. Does anybody have any main questions for the cotangent function? Anything you want to ask out loud? No? You kind of got an idea. It's just a little bit different sine cosine. The period's a little bit different, um, and the endpoints are different. Instead of 0 and 2 pi, now we're at 0, well, and 0 and, uh, now you're at 0 and pi. All right, everybody slows, so maybe you understand that one.